Before I show you how we send our code artifact or our package from TeamCT to Octopus Deploy, I have to explain to you that how we normally name our packages because the name of the package or artifact is important. So you know that we compile the code or build the code in TeamCT. We create a build artifact. In TeamCT, it's called build artifact. In Octopus Deploy, it's called a package. When I say package or build artifact, I'm referring to the same thing. And in order to store a build artifact in Octopus Deploy, it has to be either a zip file or a NuGet package. NuGet packages are in fact just zip files. If, if you rename them to .zip, then you can just decompress them. So when we create the build artifact and create a zip file, for example, we can send it to Octopus Deploy and then Octopus Deploy can deploy it for us. The name of the package has a specific format in Deploy and we have to understand that the name of the package is made of two parts the first part is your package name then followed by the package version package name and package version are separated by a dot so when the package name comes and then there will be a dot anything anything after the dot basically is the package version package version doesn't have to be just numbers it can have letters as well and then the package version as i said can have two parts or more than two parts as well package version can include like just a number for example version 10 and then it has to always end to something that is separated by a dash or a hyphen character like a minus character because that last bit anything that comes after a hyphen or a dash is called tag selector and then using that we can filter the packages based on the tag selector and this is needed because if we load same packages like the same package with the same name however with different tag names we can decide that we want to deploy for example this package and not the other packages i have to explain it with some examples and that makes it easier to understand uh, as an example the package version can be for example 10 to 1 that is your build number and then a hyphen and then release is your tag selector so when this can be used and when it can come handy so normally you have your source code in a git repository or in team foundation server something like that and it's very rare that teams don't have multiple branches normally you have several branches and at bare minimum there are normally like a master branch or sometimes it's called trunk master branch always represents what you have in production already so if you lose your production you can always build master and deploy it and you would be confident that you are deploying something that has been tested and it was already in production then you have a branch such as development or develop development branch is what the developers are working on and they keep pushing changes to that so it constantly changes and then you may have a release candidate branch or we call it rc release candidate branch is what is basically ready to be deployed to production and it's being tested the reason that there are normally separate branches for development and release candidate candidate is that like when your QA team when your testers are testing the code on RC branch developers are still changing develop and then RC branch will be intact then the tests will be valid now this tells me that the development branch is always changing and it's not tested so it cannot go to for example my test environment or to my production environment but the release candidate can go to testing environment so testers can test and potentially once it's validated by testers it can go to production environment as well so I have to be able to put some rules on these. So as I said, development can go to dev environment, RC can go to QA environment, development branch cannot go to QA environment. And then once the release candidate branch is in QA environment and the QA team or testers confirm that it's all good, it can be deployed to production environment. For example, if my package name is called my web application, and the build version is 10 20 30 then i can incorporate the branch name into the package version as a tag selector for example if i build the code that is in development branch then my package version will be 10 20 30 hyphen development and if i build the code that is in release candidate branch my package version will be 10 20 30 dash rc now i can put this rule in the octopus deploy and say that if any 
anybody wants to deploy a package to QA environment or to production environment, the tag selector has to be dash RC. It cannot be anything else. By doing this, I'm filtering the other packages and I won't allow them to go to QA environment or to production environment. Later, we can also see how we can enforce that any package that wants to go to production has to be in QA environment already and it has to be tested and those rules can be applied. In terms of package name and package version, you need a tag selector. Tag selector basically is not mandatory, but not having that, you won't be able to filter the package Packages that are not allowed to go to a specific environment. So we can now go to Team City and I will show you first how we can incorporate build version and branch name into your package version and also how we can in fact just compile different code of different branches. 